Hi everybody and welcome to our third tutorial about drug delivery in the lungs in Drew Helenation. And today we're going to talk about something very interesting. So we gather a lot of information so far about non-dimensional, about fluid, about drug force, gravity, and I want to put everything together, what we have so far. So this could be kind of a summary, but the real idea of this tutorial is to give you the ability to have some lung model or lung tissue and realize where are the particle gonna deposit inside the model which means if I have this model that I show you here so this is the top view and this is the side view you can actually predict predict what would be the trajectory in each location in each generation of the lung so of course we're gonna simplify it a little bit so we're not gonna have the full picture yet but we still already have a lot of information that we can use in order to predict where the drug and the medicine and the aerosols gonna deposit inside the lungs good so that's what we covered so far I just gonna do a short reminder we talked about non-dimensional back in pi theory we talk about the drug coefficient and how it's related to the Reynolds number which you're gonna see today also we talk about the Stokes drug. This is the drug that is most relevant to aerosol that we breathe. And we learn also about the limitation of this drug force because we know that for small particles, we need some correction if it's not spherical. And today we kind of cover a lot of stuff, but it's only applied to this idea. I want to use this with the other information that we have. So we know further ado, let's start with our first section. So the first section I want to ask you is just kind of a reminder for fluid mechanics to the people that don't remember it was far away from them. What is the velocity profile in the lungs airway? So I'm going to draw this on the board. So we have an airway general typical airway. Here it is. Here's the, our airway. Yes, it may be splits but we not care about the verification we're dealing with that region so what is the velocity profile what we said u velocity f of the fluid inside the airway so some of you may remember this what kind of velocity profile we have again parabolic yes parabolic flow which the official name is is poor cell flow not not a laminar flow let's do the uh, correction between them laminar flow says it's a, a bigger topic it says that the fluid can be discreted to different lamina which mean layers but and of course this is a laminar flow this is correct but this is a specific laminar flow which called the poor cell flow so uf equal to u max the maximum velocity that we have in the profile we see it's in the middle you see it this is the most high velocity air molecules that we have and inside the bracket what we have is let's do square bracket it's one minus r over r square so that's make the parabolic shape but it's actually saying more than that it said that the velocity near the wall is zero right and in the center you have the highest velocity that makes sense because we know that the wall is not moving so the air next to the wall should not move as well right so this is the solution for that and we saw fluid mechanics for that just a reminder what is the maximum velocity if you're going to do the mass conservation and everything you're going to find out that this is twice the average velocity what is the average velocity? I'm gonna check all the velocity that I have along the profile and, f and divide it by the area uh, and uh, multiply by the area and I'm gonna find what is the average one among them. So this is equal to the flow rate divided by the area of this airway. And I remind you that the airway, we can assume it's a perfect cylinder, right? So this is the value of that. And let's take it even farther and let's try to understand what is the flow rate inside the airway. What is the flow rate? So if we're gonna think about it, so if somebody inhale, I don't know, 100 liter per minute, 
now it needs to divide into two different regions the right lung the left lung right so I'm gonna have 50 and 50 and then again another split and another split and another split so we can understand what is the flow rate if we're gonna assume a symmetrical verification in each region of the lungs that would be 2a right but the Q let's do it in red gonna split every time homogeneously so the first Q that we have let's call it Q0 Q node divided by right here divided by which generation I am and we're gonna sign it with Z so Z is mean which which generation generation of the lungs and how many generation we have in the lungs uh, 23 yeah approximately it's changing but we say that zero is the trachea trachea I'm gonna write it in Z to 23 which is the final one so we have we have an understanding of what is the velocity the amplitude here and in each location where I am but to make things even more simpler because what I want you to do at the homework is I want you to use MATLAB and solve this equation so let's make our life easy and let's use another coordinate system we're going to use Y and X is it okay? so the only thing that we need to do is to transfer this coordinate into our language because this is a constant this is the radius of the specific airway right, this is R this is R, right? so we need to do this transition so I can say confidently that R is equal to what I'm going to do here Y plus R you see it? because if I go that and that I'm going to have R so I can just say that R equal to R minus Y plug it in and we change the location right? we change our coordinate system and this is very valid only to a certain places Most, mostly in the one plane that we are looking maybe in the center plane okay, of the cylinder good so we have the flow velocity and the flow velocity is very important because the particle gonna be subjected to this flow and we want to see the interaction between the velocity of the particle and the velocity of the flow so I'm gonna move to the next section B which is what is the particle acceler acceleration along the channel a question? A A is the area, this one let's do it in green yeah, yeah, good question. So, this area and it's changing with Z, which means which generation I am, Z, and it's equal to pi R square, which depends in which generation I am. A good question. Yeah. If Y is on the top of 2R, then you get the small R is minus R. Again, again? I think that the small R expression is reversed. Ah, reverse? Okay, why? Mm -hmm. No, you don't have 2R. You don't have 2R. You have only R here, right? And you, we're only taking care of this region. This one. Okay? You see what I mean? Yeah? You talk about this part. Yes, but we're considering a particle that is in proximity to this region, to this side of the airway. Okay? Perfect. So, the next question is what is the acceleration at the x direction of the a particle x? So, anyone has an idea how we can find this value? Applying conservation of momentum. Conservation of momentum, it's. Huh? Definitely, and more simply, we can say Newton's second law. We can consider Newton's second law right? We're dealing with the mass, the particle mass, right? And I want to find out what are the change in 
momentum, which we know the acceleration is hiding inside, right? Because if I'm going to say that the mass of the particle is constant, right? I can simplify this as m a x of the particle. Let's do it to p particle, right? And we can simplify that even more. We can say that the particle is a spherical particle. So we have the density of the particle multiplied by the volume. And the volume is a spherical particle, so it's pi dp to the third divided by six multiplied by this term, don't forget, is actually the velocity of the particle in the x direction. And I do the distinguish that the velocity could be at x, this is u, and also at the vertical axis. So this is only the horizontal one because we're solving the forces apply on the particle in the horizontal axis. Okay, what are the forces UP and VP? P stands for particle, U is the along the channel velocity. You have two components. Here, some forces on the x direction on the particle. What? Okay, guys, what are the forces that the particle feel? I'm inside the lungs, in the airway. I feel this wind pushing me. So what is the forces that apply on me? Drug force, yeah. So in general, the drug force. And we can say confidently that inside the lungs, Reynolds of the particle is smaller than one, right? If it's smaller than one, it means that the regime of the flow envelope the particle very nicely. And for that, we can use Stokes drug force. So we can use here Stokes. We can say the drug is equal to Stokes drug. And this is look like, yes. This is from the previous tutorial. In order to, to uh, say what is the drag force, what is the equation for the drag force, you need to check what is the Reynolds on the particle. And we saw that if Reynolds of the particle is smaller than one, this is a great approximation, okay? And now we're gonna write Fs, which is the force by Stokes. So this is three pi dp, the diameter of the particle, mu, okay? Let me, I want to leave here some space. So let's do, let's, I even want to write it a little bit differently. Let's do that. I'm going to write it over three, i, dp, the diameter of the particle, mu f, fluid, and here we need to put the velocity. So we're going to discuss that. And also a big limitation of the lungs of the, sorry, sorry, not the lungs, of the stocks, that stocks apply only on big particles, right? It's not apply on a very, very small particles that can actually see the molecule of the air separately. You don't see the continuum thing, so we're already gonna correct it by Cunningham correction factor, okay? Which is, as you know, is dependent on the diameter. If it's smaller than one micron, that's gonna be significant. Good. So the drag force is very related to the velocity, right? So which velocity should I put around here? I have two different kinds of velocities. I have the velocity of the flow and I have the velocity of the particle, right? So what really matter to the drag force? Again? The relative. Exactly, the relative one. So for example, let's think about it. I have a flag, okay? This is a good flag, actually. I have a flag, and you see the flag is not, uh, st and not straight, right? Because there's no wind. If I, UP, gonna have a velocity, aha, there's a drag force, right? But also, if somebody gonna have some flow around me, so we also gonna have a velocity. So what really matter is the difference between them, right? So what I'm gonna write is U fluid minus U of the particle. 
And that makes sense because if I'm moving, drag try to stop me. For that we have the minus sign. And if the flow is pushing me in the positive direction, perfect. It's pushing me and that amount of force. And if it's pushing me to the other side with the negative sign, it's here. So it's going to push me to the other side. So we have the difference which uh, determine the drag. Question? Yeah, um, should it be the kinematic viscosity or the dynamic viscosity? Again, again? Ah, here? Dynamic. Yeah, dynamic. Yes. Yes. How? Uh, yes, dynamic. OK, perfect. So right now, we're going to simplify it because we are interested in finding the acceleration, right? So if we're going to divide by that term, we're going to get 18 mu of the fluid, dp, the diameter of the particle square, rho p, the rho of the particle, cc, the correction factor, the difference in velocity, which sometimes can be called as u rel. If you're going to see it, it's the relative velocity equal to the acceleration term. OK? Perfect. Just to see that you are in business, what's the unit of this term? Exactly. This is meter per second. This is meter per second. And here I see 1 over second. You see it? So this term must be equal to that term. So we're finding out something very interesting. So this is a very important feature, and we're going to see it in the end of the lecture of today. So this is called the relaxation particle. Particle, relaxation, relaxation, time. And it's equal to 1 over that. So dp, whoa, diameter square. This is important. Rho p, cc divided by 18 mu f. So this is a characteristic time of the particle. And it's going to be very important to determine where the particle is going to deposit in the lungs. OK? So remember that, just for a feeling, what is this time like? Let's have a few examples. For example, for 10 micron, wow, this is a fat, big particle. The time, this is the diameter, the time would be approximately millisecond. Very short. Why I say very short? How much time it takes to breathe? Around four seconds, two seconds in, two seconds out. So this is much smaller than inhalation time, which is approximately four seconds. You see it? And if I'm going to go to even smaller diameter, you see the square effect? So this is one micron. What's going to happen? We're going to end up with the, uh, 10 microsecond. This is very small. If I'm going to go to 0.1 very, very sub-micron particle, this is going to be even less. OK? So I want you to keep in mind that these times are very short in our world. Maybe people that deal with another fluids, in other particles, maybe it's different. But in our case, this value, the characteristic time, is very small. OK? Perfect. I'm going to put it here. Smaller than t. Great. A microsecond. No, the diameter. Ah, diameter is micrometer. Yes, definitely. OK? Yes, this is the scale. Perfect. So we can write the equation. Also, it makes our life very nice. You see, like all the ugly stuff inside a characteristic time. And suddenly the equation is looking something like this. Up dt, right? Let's write it even like that. So I'm going to organize the equation. Up dt plus up 1 over tau equal u of the fluid, fluid 1 over tau. Right? This is the equation. All the ugly stuff inside the tau of the particle. The relaxation time. Perfect. So the next section I want to ask you, what is the flow condition presented 
when somebody is doing a breath hold, okay? Somebody is holding his breath, okay? So what happened to the flow if somebody is holding his breath? We can give you some parameters. So this is already section C. So I want to do a BH. BH is stand for breath hold. And I want the breath hold to take approximately 10 seconds. This is something that a lot of people do, that you buy the inhaler and the instruction is take the inhalation medicine, hold your breath for 10 seconds, give the particle time to deposit, and only then exhale what left outside. Okay? The initial velocity of the particle, P0, would be 10 of a meter per second. Yes? And what I want you to calculate is what is the velocity of the particle. So what's happening while people do a breath hold? Again? Perfect. So people said, Ron, if somebody is holding his breath, this is equal to zero. Let's go to this side and remind you why. Amjad, if you can help. So if we're going to go back, this is zero, right? It's dependent on the Y coordinate, right? Or the L coordinate, whatever you like to present it. But this amplitude is dependent on U average. And U average is dependent on the flow rate that entered the lungs. If this one is zero, everything else is zero, including that, okay? So back to the equation. So if we're gonna recall, this is the ODE, right? This is the ODE, first order derivative right? Normal of the function, right? And the non-homogeneous term, right? But if we're doing a breath hold, we're actually solving the homogeneous problem, right? So let's find out what it's equal to. So we're gonna write this term. So this is, I think, an equation, so I don't know, hundreds of time already in this part, time of the degree. Right, this one equal to minus yp over tau. I can do separation of variable, right? I can put this one, one dup integral equal to the integral one over tau dt. Don't forget the minus, right? Run from time zero to general time. And the solution here would be what's happened to the particle at the time relevant to this and in a general time relevant to this boundary, right? And we're gonna solve this and we're gonna get that. We're gonna get that U of the particle. Ah, and let's not forget to put here breathold and breathold to remind us that this is not the normal solution to the problem of the particle, right? This is a very specific case. It's a breathold condition. So also this parameter is only the initial velocity when you start doing the breath hold. Okay, perfect. So this is the solution that we get. You see how the tau play a significant role here. You actually determine how much time actually pass and affect the problem. You see it? We said that this is equal to 0 0.1, right? And let's try to understand and what is this term, okay? So when you think about it, let's, this is, could be 10, right, at maximum. But let's just look at it about one. Okay, one, and tau, it's in the order of, I didn't say it here, but the particle, let's do it one micron. So we actually living at this time scale, right? 10 microsecond of tau. So here is 10, right, to the power, 10 to the power of minus, five, minus six, right? So this is actually minus, minus one, 10 minus five, okay? Let's do a different game, okay? You can write it simply as 10 uh, minus, minus 10 to the five, okay? I want you not to put 10 to the 5. I want you to put in your calculator. Somebody have a calculator? Yeah, yeah plug it out, yeah, take it out. What the value 
of e to the hundred, okay? Not to the five, don't go crazy. What's the value of that? It's not zero, it's three points, exactly, seven, two. Now I want 44. Now I want you to put 10 to the five. What's gonna happen? This is so small that the calculator don't have the force power to tell you how small it is. It exceeds the ability of the calculator to tell you how small it is. It is so small, okay? So what is the idea that I want to tell you? So even though you have a very high velocity, think about it, this is 10 centimeters per second. It's something like that, I think. It's, look at the lungs. This is very fast, okay? This is very fast velocity. However, when somebody stop his breathing pattern, it's killing that very fast, okay? This is a very strong exponent. You see what I mean? So this dependency here on the diameter, it's gonna be very, very crucial. And that's the reason most of the conferences and drug delivery and inhalation design, all they talk about is what is the size of the particle? What is the size of the particle? It's very important because of that. You see? Okay, let's move on. So we found, the, we found what's gonna be the velocity, but I want to find out how far the particle would continue until it's gonna stop. We can think about the car that suddenly hit the brakes and I wanna see when it's gonna stop. What is the distance? So we're gonna go to that place here. Yeah. The velocity. Yes, we right now analyze what's happened in a specific generation of the lungs, a given generation, and then we're gonna see what's gonna happen when we follow the particle. You're gonna escape the generation, you're gonna stay in the generation, you're gonna deposit in this generation, right? And if you're gonna move out to the next generation, in the MATLAB, in your homework, you can say, okay, this is the same problem with different initial conditions, different velocity and different height, right? So we can resolve this until the particle deposit. So you find out my, uh, my strategy, how we're gonna do it, good job. Okay, so I'm gonna clean this board, okay? And right now I want to ask you, what is, I can put it in the presentation, oh, here it is. What is the stopping distance? Usually is denoted by S, not very original. So we're in section D, D, what, is the stopping stopping distance. So now we can find this term. What we need to do? Again? I don't hear you? Definitely, but what we need to do? We first need to take the velocity and have a, a distance, right? So we can use the definition. We are looking for x s of the particle, right? at the condition of breathfold, which denoted as S, the, just for short. We recall that the change in location equal to the change in velocity. This is the definition of velocity. And we're taking care of the breathfold situation. Breathfold situation. We do again the same method, and we're gonna find out that X of the particle at breathfold at any time minus the initial position of the particle, right? Equal to what? Equal to the initial velocity of the particle, multiply, you get it right, tau, the relaxation time of the particle, just a second. Multiply by one minus E minus T over TP. Yes, the question? What distance this is? If this is, yeah, if this is the particle, have the initial velocity up0, right, inside the airway, and suddenly I stop breathing. Stop breathing, this particle starts to deaccelerate, which means it's gonna losing all its velocity very fast. We saw it previously, and it's gonna stop. I care about this distance, right? When it's gonna stop? 
I would not say in that way, I would say along the channel. Along the channel, along the airway, okay? In the X direction, okay? Perfect, so we are looking for that. So this is actually that term, right? The particle, when we start the breath fault was here. This is the, the, the place where the particle is any moment, and it's equal to that. And if we want the particle to stop completely, right? We need to do, where are you? What we need to do? Yes, we're gonna wait to infinity time, and we're gonna get the final location. So if you're gonna take it to infinity, right, so the stop distance is equal to xp breffold when t is going to infinity, right? And it's actually killing that term, right? Actually, that term, right? In infinity, this go to zero, and we found that to stop, you need your initial velocity multiply by tau of the particle. So if you want to know how fast you're gonna stop, only these, these two properties. You see it? Okay? Yeah, you can add the initial location, definitely. To know the specific location where you're gonna stop. Yeah, but this is the stopping distance, where you start at the breath hold, when you finish. But correct, you need to add this to the initial, if you want, the specific location in the x-coordinate. True, okay? So if I tell some person, stop your breathing after three seconds, you can calculate where's the particle after three seconds, and then add the stopping distance. And this is going to be a very short one because of the tau. But if this tau is very big, it's not going to be short. Okay? It's important to remember that. Perfect. Okay. Let's move on to the next question. And right now I want to do what is, I want to find out what is the velocity of the particle in general without stopping my breath. So we have a flow that's pushing the particle all the time. Okay? So let's do it here. Perfect. So we're back to the scary equation. Actually, not that scary, the ODE, but a more complicated one because it's not homogeneous anymore, right? So we're trying to find out what is the solution to that work, right? DUP DT plus 1 over tau UP equal to 1 over tau u of the flow, which depended, for example, on the y-coordinate, right? Definitely, which height I am. Perfect. So, what is the solution to that equation? How can I find up? What is equal to? Exactly, it's the superposition between the private, let's do p upstairs, which means private solution, and also the homogeneous solution, right? Hey, we found that already, right? What, is, what, what was that? That is actually UP breffold. It's the condition when this term is zero. This is the homogeneous solution. We found it, right? It's actually, we have it there. It's the initial. Actually, be careful with that, okay? Breffold. Be careful here. I see many students falling on this stuff. This is not the initial velocity anymore. This is the initial velocity of the imaginary problem which called breffold. Right now we are not dealing with that. For us it's a constant which we don't know. Okay? And here we have UP which we need to find. What a private solution we can guess? Huh? Again? It's too specific, let's find it out. So let's uh, think about the constant, yeah? A constant. So if you're gonna plug in constant, that would fall apart, right? That is our constant, right? Equal to uf divided by the const, by tau p. So I see that you're right all along. U of the fluid is a private solution to the problem, right? So this term, is, let's put it a little bit here, so this is up, right, of the particle. Perfect. 
and I can give some initial condition, what I did here, we can call the initial condition u of the particle at time zero equal u zero. Okay, just for fun. And the final solution for the particle location only, only at the x direction is going to be u of the flow plus the initial velocity which is given minus u of the flow exponent minus t over tau. Yes? This is the final solution for the particle trajectory only in the x direction. Okay? This is clear? Perfect. So now let's go. Yeah? What? Ah, it's if you're gonna plug this here, put here zero, you're gonna get this. I just say uh, let's do that into that. Maybe it's clearer, right? Perfect. So right now we take the 3D problem of lung inhalation drug delivery and do it in 1D, right? Only the X. Let's add the vertical axis. Yes. Yes, yes. Okay, so this is change in which height you actually have. Okay? This is, you see the velocity profile, right? It's changing with the R coordinate or the Y coordinate. Yes, so every time you change your height, yes, this constant, constant in time, right? It's not depending on time, changing. You see? So U fluid, yes, it's definitely, it's a smart uh, thing to say. This play with Y, right? This is a good move what you said here. Yes, the velocity of the particle change. If I'm in the middle of the channel, I'm gonna fly like an arrow. If I'm gonna be very close to the surface, the velocity gonna be mild. You see it? A good point, okay? Very good point. And all the time effect related to the drug, right? Exactly, perfect. So right now I want to move on to the vertical axis. So right now, let's do this problem again. Now we are smarter than before and find out, oh, why it jump to the next one? And let's find out what's gonna be the vertical acceleration of the particle, okay? It's not gonna be that challenging. We're gonna have the same mathematical problems, right? So let's just have a quick draw so we not forget what we are doing. We in some generation, right? We have this axis, the Y and the X. And this is our particle is doing some crazy trajectory, maybe deposit, maybe it escape, I don't know. And we have gravity, right? We have the velocity profile that pushing all the molecules of the air and our particle is suspended in the air, right? So right now we want to find what is dvp over dt which what great question so she asked why gravity is down here actually not have to it could be really g sinus alpha could be general case but just for simplification let's use just g right and alpha is like alpha right could be could be, and then what we need to do to take G and add it also to the X coordinate, right? Because the particle need to move against gravity, right? Because it's, it's that direction and that direction. You have both of them, right? Good point. Okay, so we do a simplified version of the tutorial. Yes, maybe in the homework it's gonna be more challenging, okay? So, so what's, so we have the velocity at the x direction we have the velocity here so that's what we actually want to find so how are we going to find it what equation huh again newton's second law right but be careful so i'm going to put d vp over dt i assume that the mass is not changing by the way it's not always true it's depending on the particle composition, maybe it can accumulate water, maybe it's going to evaporate, so that could change in time, but let's make a dry powder a particle not changing in time, right? So what are the forces that apply on the particle only at the y direction? 
What do we have? Again? That's true. We will always have the drag. Why are we actually having a drag at a vertical axis? Why the particle? Drag is mean the particle is moving against air, right? So what's actually pushing the particle against the movement of air? G, exactly. So we're going to have here, that's true, minus mg, that's true. And also because of that, the particle is pushing down, the air doesn't like that somebody move it, right? So the air doing this thing to the particle, also in that direction, also in that direction. So we have here the drag force, which is going to be plus 3 pi dp mu f divided by cc. I take care of small particle. And what's going to be here? Uh, again, the, rear, the relative, the V relative, V minus V of the particle, right? And we can assume, which is going to be a great assumption, that there is no velocity of the flow in that direction. It's uniaxial, right? All the flow is in that direction. So it's going to be easier term. But there's the force you forgot. Yes, that's for, let's repeat about that. So this is the drag force which is perfected that way. Here you have the velocity of the flow minus the velocity of the particle, the same explanation as before. But now we take the assumption that all the velocity u fluid is as a vector is only in the x direction. There's no velocity of air doing this, okay? So via stock of a cylinder with small Reynolds, you're gonna find out this is the velocity profile. Perfect, okay. There's another force you forgot. I, if, if you don't mind, I'm going to clean this, okay? There's another force you forgot, which is... Huh? What? Why it's downwards? Be careful. Be careful, the minus is also can be inside the velocity. Don't do this mistake. I did it a long time ago, okay? So I always put these signs, and I know that the velocity sign is going to take care of the sign of the total force. Don't forget, you have here something that can have a sign. Diameter is always positive. Viscosity of the fluid is always positive. CC is always positive. But velocity can be negative, okay? Don't forget it. Perfect. Another force that you forgot, okay, is if, for example, I'm going to inhale helium bubbles. What's going to happen to the particles? They're going to go against gravity, right? Exactly. Buoyancy force. So we also need to take care, not only gravity, but also buoyancy, which means things can float inside fluids. It happens. Maybe it's less important for lungs, but if you're going to do drug delivery in the blood, this is very important, okay? So let's just have the general term. So the buoyancy force, okay, Fb, is equal to the weight of the flow that's been replaced. Which means if I have an air balloon, okay, inside the pool, it wants to go up in what force? The weight of the water of the pool that you just replaced. In our case, it's very easy. It's rho of the fluid, not, where is it? Ah, here. Here you have rho p of the particle, right? dp to the third by six, right? And you have it also here. This is m, this is look exactly like this, right? So here you have rho of the fluid and it has the same volume, you agree? It's a sphere, right? Yes, multiply by g. So most of it's more uh, accepted to write gravity and the buoyancy force together. I say the buoyancy, try to eat a little bit from the gravity effect. So we can write it as in this manner, uh, g pi dp to the third over six, rho fluid minus rho of the particle. You see what I did over there? And of course we have the drag force as we mentioned before. 
and in our case it's only of VP and with the minus, right? This is our case right now. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna divide by the mass, okay? And I want to remind you that in L problem, you know, Langs, rho of the particle would be most of the time what? What kind of density? Water droplet, right? So this is approximately 10 to the third. The density of air is around one. So you see that this is dominant over that one. So it's neglectable, but not always be careful. And also, you know, to solve this equation, it's billion dollar problem, right? We want to control drug delivery. Nobody solved this equation really to all its condition. It's very, very hard, right? So it's important to me to say to you many steps that people neglect because maybe you're going to find a solution. For example, Tirosh from Nati's lab using buoyancy force in the blood to have a sufficient drug delivery in some location. It's looked to the target place, put it up, put particles that lighter than the blood and then find, uh, suddenly find themselves entering the highest point, which is the aneurysma. That's what he's doing, okay? So this is a very interesting idea. So if we're gonna organize our equation, neglecting buoyancy, we're gonna get that dvp over dt equal minus tau. This is the same tau from before. It's still important, also in that direction. vp minus g, okay? So this is the general solution in the y-coordinate. And the next question I wanna ask you, let's write it here. So, what? Again? Ah, definitely. Okay, let's have a break. Do you mind that the break gonna be five minutes and after that they're gonna release you before? So we can uh, make sure we're gonna finish on time? Is it okay? If it's not okay, raise your hand. One, two, three. Okay, so democracy, so five minutes and we're gonna be back, okay? Let's do it seven, okay? Seven, seven minutes and we're here.